In this video, I'll show you an example of advanced Microsoft Excel test. I'll show you how to import transactional data into Excel. I'll also show you how to cleanse the data using text to column feature of Excel and also Power Query. We'll also look how to use pivot tables and a lot more. In this advanced Excel test for job interview, we will complete all the steps listed on the screen. Typically, employer provides you with the background. In this case, Client manages ebook stores from website, and client provides you an export PDF file with the list of transactions as a PDF file imported from financial system to request you to analyze data. Now in the step one, we'll import data from the PDF file, which is provided as a separate file. This is the PDF file that was provided, which was opened in Adobe PDF Reader. Typically, PDF files are not editable and there's no direct way to import them into Microsoft Excel. To do that, we would need to use Microsoft Word as an intermediary. To bring this data into Excel, I'm going to launch Microsoft Word as a separate application, create a blank document, and then open this file, because Word allows us to opening the PDF files by browsing to that log and click on the file name. Word asks me, Word will now convert PDF to an editable Word format. This may take a while. The resulting Word document will be optimized to allow you edit the text so it might not look exactly like your original PDF, especially if your original file contained lots of graphic. We'll click OK on this message and Word will bring all this data from PDF file into Microsoft Excel. Word mimics the table format of PDF file, so we should be able to just select the table. To do that, you just highlight all the columns and then select copy. Once we go back to Excel, we'll create a new tab in Excel and we'll paste the data. Now we can mark step one as complete. In the next step, we would need to professionally format imported data to make it presentable. Let's go back to our sheet uh, where we have data imported and you can see that the first column is an extra column here in Excel because date has no other dates imported and uh, you can try it for yourself because you can download all the files uh, listed in this video. Just make sure to look in the description. So what we'll do to format it professional, we'll do a couple things. We'll cut the title from the column header and you see there are other, other headers here as well. We'll do a cut. We will paste it here in the next column B and then we'll delete the entire column A. One of the best ways to professionally format the data is to uniquely identify column headers. You can then highlight them, make them bold, and change the background to make sure you emphasize them in your final document. Another tip is to use professional font. One of the fonts is Calibri or Tahoma that comes already with Excel. Now let's expand this columns to make sure they fit the size wise. Uh, so we only have one line uh, per row and this does not expand into multiple line. This way it looks professionally as well. So we'll pick the right size. Now let's select uh, the entire table in Excel and to do that we'll use shortcut Control shift end to get us to the last cell of this uh, range and it looks like column F is um, extra column as well. So we're gonna need to delete this column and you see once we delete it it changed the formatting, looks like it had some extra information, some unnecessary information. So we'll expand a little bit column E by looking at the data. And also a row 17 had a little bit longer address. So this helped as well. Let's do another selection, Control Shift End. And we'll just make the selection smaller holding Control Shift. We'll use the arrow to the left to reduce the selection size. And we need to do that so we can apply the borders, make the all borders and make it a single border. And we also need to highlight the header to make it look professional. And we use the fill of some light color. This is whatever your preference is. And I think it looks much more professional now. This way we can mark step two as complete. We will do it by applying the same format painter and reapplying it to the row eight. In the next step, we would need to describe the data we have imported into Excel. So let's go back to our table. I'm going to make it a little bit larger. And there are a couple 
techniques you can use to describe the data. Number one is obviously look at the data and understand what's in the column. So we have date, ebook name, price, purchaser name, and purchaser address. So it's a list of transactions from the ebook sales. And you can also look at the background. And in the background, it looks like it's the same data, a similar type of data described, just to confirm that your hypothesis is correct. One of the best ways to describe the data is to understand what data represents. Also, you can look for the column headers. A lot of times, they contain a lot of valuable information. Look common sense and then come up with the description that you can write uh, and provide to the interviewer. Sometimes employer might ask you to put the written description here because there is no way for you to communicate this on the test. So you might want to type it in and put it into the column where they require to put you the answer. I typed in a description. Now you can use wrap text, uh, which will make this column very large. So I might rather create another column here. And I created a column called written answer. So now I can cut this value and paste it in here format it so it aligned to the top aligned to the left adjust the column a little bit and this is our answer imported data contains a list of ebook transactions and includes uh, date of transaction name of ebook price it was sold for and name and address of the person who purchased it and now we can mark step three as complete to do that we'll copy the value using format painter from the cell c8 and then we will uh, paste it into the cell C9. In the next step, we would need to change tab title to sales data and also assign data types to imported columns in Excel. Selecting correct data type is very important, especially when we convert the data from the imported file into Excel table later as part of this exercise. To do that, uh, first let's change the tab title. To do that, we will click on the tab uh, and you see it became editable and we'll just type sales data. And in the next step, we will need to assign data types here. To do that, you need to select the entire column and this is the date data type. So, and you see right now it's general. So we would need to change it from general to short date. Uh, that's the most appropriate data type. This is the text because this is the name of the ebook. So we'll change it to text. Column C, we will change the currency. That's the most appropriate uh, type for this column. Column D, we will change to text. And column E, we will change to text as well. And now we can mark step four as complete. A lot of questions in this video are covered as part of my ebook. If you're getting ready for Excel interview or assessment test, Make sure to check out my ebook store to make sure you get prepared faster. In the next step, we would need to create an Excel table from the data. To do that, let's navigate to the Sales Data tab. Uh, we would need to highlight the entire table, so Control Shift N allows us to highlight it. And then we can either use Control T or in the Data tab, we can just use Insert and then click Table. And you see the shortcut for this is Control T. And then we click Table. And then it prompts us to confirm the range for this table. We double check the range and it looks nice. And it also asks you to check my table has headers, which our table does. The row one contains headers, so we'll click OK. And now we can mark this step as complete. In the next step, we would need to split name column into first and last name using the text to, fe text to column feature of Excel. To do that, let's analyze the column. And looks like we have uh, both first and last name in the column D and it has purchaser name. To do that, let's select column E, uh, right click and click insert. It added the new column E next to the column D, so which would help us to put this extra value that will be created right into column E. Now let's use text to column feature. It's part of the data tab. So I selected column D and then click on the text to column. It prompts me if I'd like to use text to multiple columns uh, and what kind of delimiter we have. We have a space as the delimiter between first and last name. So we select delimited, then we'll click space. Make sure to select that. Um, then we click next. 
now it split them uh, accurately uh, we want to change the general data type into text data type because both of those are text and then we click finish and it shows that uh, there is already column e in place and shows us the message there is already data here do you want to replace it if we wouldn't have created column e it would have overwritten the column f so that's the reason we created column e and we'll click ok on this message and you see now it um, added the values so instead of purchaser column d we will call first name and column e we will just call last name and we can mark this step as complete a lot of times my student asks me what are the features of microsoft excel i can demonstrate to the interviewer to impress them the most even though it's hard to determine which particular feature would be valued by hiring manager Typically, I recommend you focus on the features that's important to the company, based on the company business and company's profile. For example, if this is a financial company, you might impress the manager with your knowledge of Excel stocks data type. Or if this is a manufacturing company, you might add value to the organization through your knowledge of pivot tables and Power Query. In the next step, we would need to split address to separate address and zip using Power Query. To accomplish this, Let's use Power Query feature and uh, let's analyze purchaser address. Looks like it has address without city uh, and only contains street name and zip separated uh, with the slash. Now, to use Power Query, we need to select this column, navigate to the Data tab, and then here click Get and Transform Data, and we'll be transforming it from the table slash range. So let's click on this button. It launches the power query and inside power query let's find this column which is our purchaser's address now we need to highlight the column here do a right mouse click and here we would use split column feature and we will be splitting columns by delimiter so let's select by delimiter and the uh, power query, query is very smart so it offered us uh, slash as the delimiter but as you can see much better split would be space slash space so let's change that and we'll use uh, space slash space as you can see it split at both values now we need to change the name so this would be street this would be uh, zip and we can save and load it back into excel excel created a separate tab for this this is our original data sales data and this is the sheet 2 which we'll call sales data 2 and now we can mark this step as complete. I need your help. What are the questions that you see as part of Excel interview or assessment test? Can you please post them in the comments of this video? This will help me answer those questions and together we'll be able to help others to get prepared for the interview faster. In the next step, we would need to determine the city based on the zip code and add it as a new column. Keep in mind, that as part of this question, you are being tested for the latest features of Microsoft Excel. Geography data type was just recently introduced in the application. To do that, let's analyze the data. Now we have sales to data. So we have zip as a separate value. And right now zip is the uh, text value. To do that, we need to use new feature of Excel uh, called uh, geographical data. To use this feature, we need to navigate to the data tab select our zip column and click on geography data it will basically go to bing and will try to uh, convert and determine if this is a valid zip code which it did with some exceptions for some zip codes it wasn't able to do that so we need to manually resolve it i'll show you how to do it for one zip code uh, we just click on the question mark and it shows we need help with this text and here in the uh, data selector it shows us the zip code uh, it's only four digits in US zip code is five digits so we need to add a leading zero and then we will click enter and it says uh, that this is 07631 is Bergen County in New Jersey which is correct we click uh, select and um, this resolve this uh, ideally you would want to go and resolve all of this uh, for the purpose of this video I'm not going to do it because our step is to really add a city and to do that we need to keep this column G highlighted and then click the plus sign and that's the coolest new feature of Excel ultimately what happened it went to Bing queried each of these values 
determined that this is a valid zip code and now it knows what the city is and we click add column and we know that it can add city which is one one of the values and uh, you see for the ones where it was correctly recognized the value of the city was determined accurately we can obviously resolve all these errors manually but there's uh, another way to uh, add leading zeros in excel so let's roll back by using undo for each of the steps and before converting it into geography data type i am going to uh, add leading zeros uh, to the zip column to do that i'm going to select the column i'm going to select control one which opens up format cells uh, box and then i'm going to click custom in the type box i'm going to type five zeros which would represent the format that it's all numeric and it should maintain five digits i'm going to click ok and you see that it added uh, leading zeros uh, for the values that were missing and now we can convert zip into geography data type and hopefully it would resolve all the errors and you see it did resolve all the errors and now we can add the city and we'll expand city column and the only place it didn't resolve it is for the this value so we would need to look into this but looks like for the remaining zip codes it was able to successfully resolve and find the city now we can go back and mark this step as complete if you are getting ready for the interview where you will be asked microsoft excel questions make sure to check out my website to learn more about additional resources available to get you ready for the interview in the next step, we would need to determine state based on the zip code and add it as a new column. To do that, let's navigate to the Sales Data 2 tab. We will select the zip code and we'll click a plus button and uh, one of the values is the state and we'll click the state. And as you can see, uh, Excel determined by querying the Bing search engine states for all of the zip codes and we can mark this step as complete. In the next step, we would need to create a pivot table uh, from the data in the Sales Data 2 tab. To do that, let's navigate to the tab, Sales Data 2. We can click on any cell in the table, and we'll need to click Insert and then Pivot Table. And it prompts us uh, which table would you like to create pivot table from, which is table range, which is correct. We'll create it in the new worksheet. We'll click OK. And this is the pivot table that was created by default nothing is selected no fields but all the fields from the table are listed here and we will be using those in the next steps of the exercise but for now we can mark this step as a as complete but before that let's rename that this would be our pivot table tab and uh, we can navigate back and mark this step as complete my students often ask me what is the best way to learn features of Microsoft Excel faster? I typically recommend experimenting. The best way to experiment is to download a sample set of data or maybe use a copy of production data. Using your data samples, you can then try to solve real business problems and answer specific business questions. Just remember, you can always go back by pressing Ctrl-Z. This is the undo function in Microsoft Excel. In the next step, we would need to determine total sales by state using pivot table. To do that, let's navigate to the pivot table and it's very simple. Using pivot, uh, we just need to select price because this is the total sales and then state itself. And that shows us the sum of price. We can highlight it and uh, mark this column as a dollar sign but this is the total. Sometimes employer asks you to take a screen print of this. To do that, uh, you just need to highlight the area and uh, use a snip and sketch tool in Windows 10, other tools on the Mac, somehow take the screen print, or you can just copy the data uh, and you can copy it as picture as well. You click OK and uh, if you're required to paste and demonstrate the values, you just paste it here and that would be the values uh, from this uh, exercise and we can mark this step as complete. In the next step, we would need to calculate sales by month using Power Pivot in Excel. So we navigate to the tab where we created Power Pivot and here uh, what we need to do, we need to select our pivot table and we just need to select price and then we need to select month and it shows us uh, total sales by months you see the total here matches 
uh, the totals for sales for state that we calculated before. So we might want to highlight it and select dollar value, uh, sum of price, copy the data, and then uh, copy it as a bitmap, copy as picture, or you can copy as values, doesn't matter, copy as picture, uh, and then paste it right here on the screen and type that this is sales by month. And we can mark this step as complete. In the next step, we would need to build the graph that shows sales by month. In the previous steps, we've already built a pivot table that shows sales by month. Now the only remaining task is to create a graph. To do that, we select all the areas with the months and then prices and sum of totals for the particular month. And then we just go to insert tab and then we will pick any recommended charts because the instructions do not specify which chart do we want to use. Uh, and we can just start with recommend the chart. Uh, and column chart represents sales the best. So we will just use the first uh, clustered column. And uh, this represents sales by month. We'll organize them a little bit. So we'll move this sales by month a little bit to the right. And we will mark this uh, step as complete. If you like this video, make sure to click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more tips and tricks on how to get prepared for Excel interview and assessment test. In the next step, we would need to create a map which shows sales by each state in the United States. We will start here by looking back at the sales data and creating a new pivot table from the sales data. To do that, we'll click on the Insert tab and click Pivot Table. We'll put our pivot table in the new worksheet and create it from a table. In the pivot table, we'll select state and price, and it built a table to show sales by state. If we try to directly insert map chart, we'll not be able to do that. We'll get this error message. So what we need to do, we need to copy the data and paste it as values. So to do that, we'll select the pivot table, create copy, and uh, paste as values right next to it. We'll rename this row as state, and this would be sales. And now we will click insert map. It built a map which shows sales by state in the United States. We'll rename the chart. We'll call it uh, sales by state. It shows state by state in the United States, and we can mark this assignment as complete. In the last assignment, we need to calculate which county in California has largest sales volume. This is a tricky question, as a lot of last questions are in Excel interview or assessment test. The reason it's tricky, because the data we're trying to massage doesn't exist yet in the table. We would need to calculate it. To answer this question, we would need to look up the county values from the zip code and then use county data that was calculated. If we look at the sales data, we don't have a county here. So the, the trickiness of this question uh, relates to the fact that we need to calculate the county. It's easy to do. You just click the plus button and add uh, admin division two and calculate the county based on the zip code. So now once we've calculated the county, we need to build another pivot table which shows and calculates sales in California by county. Let's go and do it step by step. To do it, uh, let's create a new pivot table. We'll click an insert tab, select pivot table. Uh, we'll create pivot table in the new worksheet. And here by default, it doesn't show the new calculated value. So what we need to do, we need to click on the pivot table and select refresh. So now you see that we have state and the new value that we've added, admin division for county. To calculate which county in California had the largest sales, let's select price. Let's select state, let's select the county itself. And you see that Excel helped us um, break down the data. And California is the second state listed, which shows all California counties. And the highest sales volume was for Los Angeles County, $38.85. And now let's go ahead and mark this final assignment as complete. If this video was helpful, make sure to click the like button and subscribe to my channel. For links mentioned, make sure to check the description of this video. To learn more on the topic, make sure to check my ebooks and online training courses. All the best on your interview and Excel assessment test. Make sure to check out my other relevant videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We have a lot of great stuff planned in the pipeline and I don't want you to miss any of it. 
And if you'd like to get notified about all the new stuff that are coming out, make sure to subscribe to my email list as well. All links are here on the screen. Make sure to click to stay in touch. Thanks again for watching.